And then you correctly saw that the chloride would be getting a charge. So we can balance that with a sodium spectator ion. So this would give us all three of the products. This is the most important over here, but this one might be interesting as well. Okay, so uh, that's our E2 reaction over here. The hard part, again, was, so anytime you're doing an elimination, you have to identify all the beta carbons and then decide which beta carbon is going to be attacked. Well, if it's an E2 reaction, uh, by the way, all this Hoffman and Zaitsev was just for E2. Um, steric hindrance is not an issue for E1 at all. Steric hindrance is ne not an issue for E1 at all. So um, what are we going to form uh, for E1, more or less substituted? Because that stabilizes the alkene. So Because the more substituted beta carbon has too much steric hindrance. Yeah. What does it mean if something's more substituted? It means it has more stuff around it, which means it has more steric hindrance. Well, if there's a lot of steric hindrance around the beta carbon, and there's also a lot of steric hindrance around the base itself, then they're not going to be able to get close enough to make the transaction. Um, on the other hand, even if there is a lot of steric hindrance around the beta carbon, as long as the base doesn't have too much steric hindrance, it can still reach in and get that hydrogen over here. All right, so this is what you want to have in your notes. You want to have this in a safe place in your notes because, like I said, some of these things actually might not be important for a chapter or two, but these will be important in one or two chapters, so it's good to have them all in one place in your notes. We might as well go through all this right now. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the rule for what to do when there's more than one beta hydrogen for E1 or E2. E1, the major product, is always more substituted because steric hindrance just doesn't matter for E1. Why doesn't it matter? Um, because remember, the big problem for E1 is stabilizing the carbocation. Um, that's the only thing we care about for E1. Um, once the, the carbocation is formed, um, it's going to be so happy to be attacked by anybody and stop being a carbocation that steric hindrance is not a big issue. But for E2, we saw before that steric hindrance is not a big obstacle to E2. That's why E2 can still work even with a tertiary substrate. But there, um, you can still have too much steric hindrance if you have a very substituted beta carbon and a very substituted base. And in that case, you'd want to form the less substituted product with the Hoffman. Uh, otherwise, you'll form the more stabilized alkene. You might need to know these terms, Zaitsev and Hoffman, so I labeled them here too. I guess E1 is always Zaitsev, although I don't know if people use that term for E1. But E1 always forms the more substituted product over here. So these are uh, important rules to have in your notes for E1 and for E2. This, by the way, is what's called regiochemistry. Regiochemistry is when there's more than one region in the molecule that can react, and you have to predict which one. Well, if there's more than one beta carbon, um, more than one beta hydrogen, uh, beta carbon with beta hydrogens, um, that you have to determine which region is preferable. So that's regiochemistry. You'll be seeing more and more regiochemistry as time goes on. 